Well, you're all here today to hear the reasons behind the painting here. And I'm going to give a little bit more than just the reasons why that. I have done this painting because um, when I heard people were offended by it, I was a bit offended by the fact that they were offended by it. <laughs> and I'll explain why too. First of all, my intentions in this was not blasphemy to start with. The intention here was to enter a competition called Taz Art, which is very selective, it's not easy to get into. And so I want to do something very Tasmanian and very art with sort of the idea of this painting is just going to say the word Taz Art just by looking at it. So I picked the Tasmanian Devil, which is probably my favourite animal. And I picked, I thought of art, you know, you think of art, who's the most famous artist in the world? Leonardo. The Mona Lisa just didn't look right as a Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> and so I looked at Last Supper and I thought, Last Supper, that's perfect, because of the title. Not so much because it had Jesus in it, but because it is called The Last Supper. It's like a parable in reverse. So where Jesus and his disciples were having a meal before Jesus faced execution. The Tasmanian devils are all having a meal and we just hope that they don't face extinction. So I think it gives out a message. Just saying the word last supper is suggesting that these guys could become extinct. So that's the message I'm trying to put out. It's a wake up call. Say, hey, Look out, these guys you know, could become extinct. Now the problem I see is uh, why people object to it. Probably twofold. One is the animal has the name devil. And the other is that people don't like devils, which is sad. A word can have two meanings. I'm sure if you think about it, lots of words can have two meanings. The word devil usually in our culture refers to uh, Satan or Lucifer. Unless you're part of the environmental movement, and then the word devil usually means the Tasmanian devil. But to clarify it, you just gotta put the word Tas in front of it, or Tasmanian, and then it changes the word devil, doesn't it? The, uh, it's always had that name. It's got this very loud roar, a loud scream, and that's what provoked it to being given this name in the first place. It used to be called the Native Devil back when we used to call Van Diemen's Land. The scientific name Sarcophilus harasite, Sarco meaning dead or dead flesh, and Phyllis meaning the love of, the love of dead flesh, and Harasai, named after Lieutenant George Harris, who first described this animal. He first described it as a scientific name, Didelphus ursinus, which means uh, what well, means bear-like marsupial, because he thought they looked like little black bears. Unfortunately, because he didn't, he wasn't connected to the internet, or he didn't really know that that name was already being used to describe the wombat. Later on, it was called Sarcophilus satanicus, Satan's lover of dead flesh. Mm -hmm. That name lasted a little while before, you know, most scientists said, well, it's just silly, let's call it Sarcophilus harasai, which it still has today. So, I mean, what's in a name? There are <coughs> plenty of animals that uh, have nasty names. There are plenty of animals which are used as symbols of Satan. And I really don't want this animal to be demonised in that sort of fashion. I just quickly want to answer a letter in the paper today. Somebody sort of said, you know, if it was something insulting Islam, I wouldn't have done it. Well, they're right. Because Islam doesn't have any great works of art. Islam doesn't have any great works of art, they don't have any science because they are backward. Whereas Christianity has gone through the Renaissance. So, that's my response to that later. Uh, Islam hasn't made anything worth knocking. So Christianity is a, a religion with some reason. Nobody's dragging me out, nobody's stoning me. Let's get back on the track. I want to give you 
Another interesting thing, this is something about Christianity which you probably wouldn't find in Islam or any other religion. You might. History of the koala. In 1927, the koalas were being hunted to the point of extinction. They become extinct in South Australia. They were becoming extinct in other states. Queensland, I think over a million pelts, two million pelts were coming out uh, each year of koalas. So, you know, that was taking its toll. And people started kicking up a fuss about it. The Archbishop of Brisbane entered the, day, uh, the debate. Sorry, I said Brisbane like an American. I've been from the States. Brisbane. He entered the debate calling for a statewide protest. He stated that if any acting Premier realises how deeply offensive it is for the permission to destroy native bears has given such a vast number of quiet, reasonable, decent-minded people, the permission would have been withdrawn. So this is saying the Premier at the time had given permission for the hunting to go ahead. The Archbishop called for a stop to it. Exactly the same time, in Tasmania, nobody cared about the opossum hyena. They didn't even know what an opossum hyena was. Some people called it the Tasmanian wolf. Later on, it was known as the Tasmanian tiger, but by then it was too late. The species had faced extinction. And so what we learn from this is that if we love an animal, it's more likely to survive than if we hate an animal, or if we're indifferent to an animal. So if people don't, you know, if they see devils as something nasty, icky, it's a lot less likely that we're going to save this creature than if people absolutely love this animal. And this is probably why I feel a little bit offended when somebody found this offensive, because I love this animal. So when I painted this, it wasn't painted by somebody who was trying to draw rats or flies or maggots or something in place of Jesus. It's somebody who drew an animal that they absolutely loved in place of Jesus. In the history of Christianity, there have been many other such symbols. The lamb, obviously. Uh, the lion. I walked into the Christian bookshop yesterday or the day before. Picked up this. It has a picture of a screaming lion on the cover. And it says Revelation. It's a study book, a study guide on Revelation. And it says, the lamb who is the lion. So they're referring to Jesus here as a lion. It's a surprising one, pelican. Pelican is a symbol of Christ's sacrifice because it was believed, I don't think it's true, but it was believed that pelicans would rip open their stomach to feed their young. Probably actually saw the bottom of the beak being turned inside out, but still. And here's a surprising one, the vulture is a symbol of Christ. The vulture, it's a vulture actually fighting a snake as a symbol of Christ's victory over Satan. So what I am putting forward here is that if the lion is a symbol for Jesus, why can't the Tasmanian devil be a symbol for Jesus? The Tasmanian devil is a powerful animal, it is a phenomenal hunter, it is a bone cruncher. This would be about a seven kilogram Tasmanian devil. It'd be the jaws of it. They open up incredibly wide, over 90 degrees. They hide amongst bushes. They launch themselves out. Imagine my fist here, it'd be about the size of the skull of a 25 kilogram wombat. Launch through, crush, kill. It's a powerful animal. For their size and weight, probably even more powerful than a lion. <coughs> Their back teeth overlap like a pair of secateurs, so they can shave bone up very, very fine, and then they can digest the bone. So we're talking about powerful animal. I'm going to show a little bit of video footage of a comparison of lions and Tasmanian devils. A little bit of blood in this, but I hope you don't mind. And this is just comparing devils and lions. And the whole idea of it being coming a, 
a symbol for Jesus. I think there's a comparison there. <laughs> it's just the Australian version of the line. This painting here, if, uh, if it was painted by somebody who didn't like devils, who thought devils were icky, disgusting animals, uh, even then I'd still think it's just a parody on a Leonardo piece. But I, could, so I can see somebody sort of thinking that that could be blasphemy because they don't want to see Jesus portrayed as something that looks like a big overgrown rat. But what the people who object to this painting probably don't realise is that basically how much I absolutely love and adore Tasmanian devils. Next bit of footage I'm going to show is of a uh, a uh, Tasmanian devil which I hand raised. Her name is Kindred. And one of the heartbreaking things of working with a Tasmanian devil is that they are very smart, very intelligent, they are very gentle and very affectionate animals. That's heartbreaking because their lifespan is seven years. So from when she was a young and I baby sat her, I basically fed her bottles till she was old and basically I had to comb her hair and basically do the old people's treatment on it. <laughs> I've known her whole life and it is really heartbreaking to see her go. But here's a little bit of footage, part of my YouTube videos here. Sometimes this growling can be mistaken for anger. But often it's excitement. Or oh, just talking to me. Hey? Just talking to me, aren't you? Yes. Yes. You talk to me. Alright, let you go. I'm gonna miss her. I love that girl. admit that this is one of God's creatures. So therefore, it is unreasonable to hate this animal. Especially when it has 
which you can see it's got a really nice nature often, but it is also a powerful animal. <clears throat> I think that um, Christians and ministers here, you must believe that God has put you on this island and you could possibly be overlooking one of the most powerful symbols of Christ there is. So this is sort of my challenge, <clears throat> is instead of you know worrying about whether it's blasphemy, I just push it forward a little bit further and say, I think the devil should be used as a symbol for Christ. Because it has all the attributes that the lion does. If, except probably, you know, apart from the size, probably more powerful. Jesus spoke in parables to make his lessons exciting to his followers, to give people things they can relate to. He spoke to the people around him about things that they understood. The churches here should be talking about things that Australians can understand. Why devils? Because they're ours. We're Australian. The Tasmanian devil is ours. We should be proud of it. It has all the features of a lion. It's loud, powerful, it's beautiful. It has all the features of a vulture. It cleanses the land and it eats snakes, which is unfortunate because I like snakes. Many times I see a snake heading towards the devil in play, to run and grab the snake quickly and try and rescue it. But there are a few times when I would find in the devil droppings uh, the skin and bones of copperhead snakes and tiger snakes. So they do eat the most venomous snakes on the planet. When they eat, they act as one. For you who may not be Christian here, uh, there's often talk of the body of Christ, which is the church. All the churches together should be acting together as the body of Christ. Tasmanian devils act together as a group when they start consuming something. See so the front fang here is bullet shaped. Now that uh, is a brilliant fang to penetrate through the bone of their prey to make it kill, but we don't make bullet shaped knives. It is not a very good shape to actually rip and tear open flesh. So one devil could make a kill, but it's not until the next devil comes along and grabs the other side and what looks like a tug of war, they can actually rip open the animal and get inside. So they have to work together as a team. These are parables that probably should be used in church. They talk of the good shepherd. I'd like to put forward the parable of the good zookeeper, who no matter how vicious and nasty a devil can be, the good zookeeper still loves that devil. Some devils will be cuddled and hugged by the good zookeeper. Some will bite the good zookeeper and he will still love them. The good zookeeper can be covered in scratches, bites, blood, guts, mud and excrement and still love the animals in his care. I look forward to the day when someone in church will say, and the Taz devil lay down with the koala. Right, I'll open it up to uh, question and answer time. For anybody who would like to say anything. Well, I'd like to say that I think it's wonderful to have this chance to talk about these things. And I believe that when we make an analogy and compare one thing with another, we're often comparing only one feature, like Christ like the lamb, the lamb going uh, into, the, into the stall and, and Christ, Christ like the shepherd looking after it. Christ the, the lamb, it's the lamb as a sacrifice. Mm. Um, when Christians who are older see something like that, they don't make that analogy as one, one feature. They see the artist as depicting the disciples and Christ as people sitting down at the Last Supper. And most of us, because we grew up 
with these ideas in a church. We've seen in our church rooms quite often a reproduction of the Last Supper. So we've got it in our heads and it's sort of sacred in our heads. It's, mm. it's Christian. And when we see that, we have a, a kind of barrier against mm. it. But when you explain things, I can see exactly what you mean. Mm. And so, you know, it's interesting to talk about these things. We don't have to decide that we'd like it on our walls. That's but true. certainly it's interesting that we can come and talk about things and see it because it's very skillfully executed. Thank you. Can I ask the question of Christians here, had I had substituted all those figures for lions, which is already our symbol for Jesus, as we see here, would it be as bad? I don't think it's bad. I don't think, when you say as bad, as bad as what? Because I don't see it as bad. Well, it's just that the lion is a well-established symbol for Christ, and the test devil certainly isn't, which I'm hoping today might change that. Uh, I'm just looking to see, for people to see the Tasmanian devil in a positive light, but I'm interested to see, you know, if, if you can imagine the all lions doing that, would that be as offensive, given that our culture already accepts lions as a symbol for Christ? I think we'd still have that bar because we just believe that that painting should be as is mm -hmm. and not, not have any mm. kind of change in, mm. in reproduction. I'd like to suggest that the biggest commutation is the word devil. Yeah. Well, it's our culture that gave it that name. Yes. And no, we have to change. I, I believe we have to change either. Well, to give you an example, I was uh, a couple of years ago driving along, listening to the radio, and some country and western song came on, and the guy on there talked about the devil. And the first thing that entered my mind was something cute, black, and cuddly. So that's what the word devil means to me. Yeah. Then I realised, oh no, they're talking about the other part of the horns. Okay. <laughs> so it's, um, I guess I'm trying to get people to see the devil the way I do. You know, just don't think of the spooky guy, I think of the, the wonderful animals which are so good for our environment and which we need. And which could very well face extinction if we don't turn this around and we, you know, we have to sort of love this out. I'd like to make a comment. Um, yeah. I, what I find the most interesting about, about all this kerfuffle is that the original painting is more blasphemous against Christ because uh, on the one, for, 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 for a few reasons, mm. um, we're told not to make images for ourselves. That's one of the commandments. Yeah. And bow down and worship it. Mm. And somehow... A painting by a medieval artist, whose Christianity, who knows what it was anyway, painted a picture which had, did, did not depict Christ, but depicted a medieval setting, uh, had no relationship to Jesus at all, put his own cultural values into it, and, and Christians today are so inculcated with his image that they see it as Christ and are offended by it, which is blasphemous in itself. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's a way of looking at it. It's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right about some Christians. Yeah, well, but, and, Christians and so you're not, you're not being blasphemous, you're taking the mickey out of Michelangelo. I mean, and he, and he was more blasphemous than you were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that your problem, perhaps, is that because you see uh, the lion, the lamb, uh, etc., in scripture, uh, uh, and you think that we could impose the devil in, in, as well as, but I think you will find that in scripture that uh, to think of Jesus as the lion is not to think of him as tearing other animals apart and eating them, or roaming through the jungles and all the other things that lions do, thinking simply of, of the lion's power. And so the lamb, we're not thinking of, a, of, of Jesus going bah in a field with a lot of other helpless Christians saying bah, mm. uh, but he was the, the sacrificial offering which linked him through to the Old Testament sacrificial offerings. Mm. And so uh, it was when you started to uh, 
to think of the devil as another substitute for Jesus, if you like, that I started to get turned off. No, there are things about the devil, there are things about the lion, there are things about the lamb. I, I can't recall the pelican, but I'm getting old. But, you know, but, but, uh, it's, they're not, the but, but they're not, yeah, I, I wouldn't argue that, but they're not taken wholly in all no. their ways as no. a substitute. One. And that's no, your problem. But they're <laughs> taken as aspects of yes. Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each one, each animal, if you like, is yeah. taken as aspects of Christ. So and give us an aspect to the devil, but don't tell us to set him up. I think the only thing that really confuses the issue in our C.S. Lewis is Aslan, which is mm -hmm. basically taken as Christ. But you know, usually in Scripture, from my understanding, it is referring to an aspect of Christ, yeah, yeah. an aspect of his power, an aspect of his might. You know. So mm -hmm. I'm just sort of saying, if a lion, why not a devil? So it's just straining it a bit. I think, I think uh, there was one thing about the lion which is not quite the devil is that a lion uh, puts a man in, in fear for his own life. There's a, there's, a, there's a great power there that can take you out. Mm. And, and, and unless you fear God in the same way, uh, the, the, you know, that's the power, that's the symbol. You've been some of the devil dance that I've been into. <laughs> no, that's that's but 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 just as a single devil. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of fear about this animal, which is why I got the name devil. And well, a lot of the fear was actually because they didn't see it; they heard it. Mm. So there was a fear about the noise it made, and there are verses in the Bible about the noise a lion makes induces fear. Uh, so, as I say, they are similar. If, if devils were, any bit, were a bit bigger, I think they might have trouble. Oh, uh, that would be <laughs> a devil the size of a lion would be scary. <laughs> they exist once. <laughs> they did, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I think it's a, a fantastic, um, fantastically interesting conversation. And I'm just sort of thinking, you know. Uh, even now, we're not talking about the plight of the Tasmanian devil. Um, we're talking about um, something else. Um, and I just sort of think that it'd be nice if that, um, that painting was um, tabled, if that's the word to do it, in every church across Australia, and this discussion took place. <laughs> so I think it would be very useful, because what we should be doing is um, getting people to be thinking about the plight of species that are endangered, particularly the Tasmanian devil. And seeing if people are prepared to, you know, help out in very practical things, be very practical Christians about sort of uh, contributing to the cause. Mm. Well, it's asking me. Is, is the purpose of this meeting just to decide whether or not the painting gets displayed or taken down? Is that what? what it's just open up to discussion. What, what would you like to say? Ah, oh, mate. Well, I, I congratulate you. I was always impressed by it. I thought it was good piece of work. Um, and what I saw in it was a, uh, a fellow, yourself indeed, who had a concept, wanted to bring an issue to the forefront, which you did successfully. And once again, I applaud you for it, mate. <laughs> and the other thing is that um, that, that image you had had been taken from another painting that once again was painted by a human being quite some centuries ago. We would have never seen God. Yeah. And and has put an image on the, up on the wall and then other people from various churches have taken that on board as being an absolute gospel and yeah, that's you know, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know and, and it's an absolute cost because I think, you know, uh, the bloke himself was a man and you can argue whether or not he is a God or not, that's a separate issue and not interested at all in getting into that. There was a bloke called Jesus and he came up with a concept that wasn't too bad. Uh, one of his followers are around today and that's fine. Uh, I suggest the man would be dark in, in skin tone from the Mediterranean. He might have had a fuzz like yourself on his face. Uh, he hung around with fishermen, so I'd say he's one of the boys. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't worry me at all, mate. There, there is an image that was put up by um, um, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, which he dragged out of his head. He's a human being himself. It didn't come down from Mount Sinai, for heaven's sake. Uh, and there it is, and you decided to uh, capitalise on it and make my record more power to it. So I'm going to go and get a cappuccino, and you can take an account of those who support you, add mine to the account for them. <laughs> Maybe we could have just a, a, just a quick informal show of hands, the uh, yay or nay, or... Oh, okay.
Okay, yeah. 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 Who thinks the pain should stay? Until Christmas Eve, that's when the exhibition finishes. Yeah, I think mean, it's just most people here. I think one thing that we have to um, think about is the opportunities in our community to showcase the work of creative people in our community. And, and this is the only opportunity in our town, apart from annual events, when people get the opportunity to showcase their work. We don't have a gallery in our town. We have a gallery of artworks which are purchased by the local, by local government and other sponsors, some of which hang in closed quarters like community spaces. The only opportunity we've got to view most of what belongs to our local local government collection is in the upstairs um, foyer of the Civic Centre. And at the moment there are some works that belong to us as right players in this community hanging at Penguin in the new centre. So I applaud John for opening up this space and providing an opportunity for people to show their work. I'm not interested in, in um, people's opinions about the work because I think over the centuries, artists have used their own interpretations to show whatever. And if we looked at The Last Supper, we know that there may well be Michelangelo's copy of The Last Supper, but if we look around the churches of Italy, it's not the only one. If we look around the refectories of monasteries and, and religious buildings <coughs> across Europe, you'll find similar images, not necessarily yeah. created by, by Michelangelo or any of the great artists, but by very common people and very interested and keen people, keen to show and exercise their own creative talents. And I think that's what this space is about. It's about showcasing people's work. And whatever it is, I mean, who knows, next, next time it could be a collection of nudes. Well, we're going to have the same thing because there's going to be someone out in our community who isn't going to like what's on the wall. Well, so be it. They don't have to come in the book, has it? They don't have to attend the opening. They've got a belief and, that, and I value their belief but they don't have to tell me what I want to see. And I think that's something we've got to think about, that in communities, the opportunity to look at other people's creativity needs to be fostered. Mm. Cool. I think we'll sort of wrap it up. <clears throat> could, could, we know, just... could we know what the original, uh, the person who originally worried about <coughs> what the point of view was, because we've mentioned He, lots he of was worried about how it would appear to uh, people in his church. He, from what I understand, um, that was his main concern. And from what I believe, there's going to be a press release later by the group, so we'll find out. Yes, yes. So I'd just what? like to maybe Something I just really want to say because um, people ask, you know, it's all very well to sort of talk about devils and it's like, you know, what can you do to save devils? And that's sort of, and people sort of think, it's going to take some effort. Well, what did it take to save this animal? Basically, just people had to love it. And I think that's the message I want to give out here is if we can turn this around, it's hindered by our culture because it's given them the name devil, but if we can turn it around and get people to love this animal, well, if you love the animal, you go to wildlife parks. When you go to wildlife parks, you support the work they're doing there. You tell people about it, and probably most important of all, you're aware of it. And so if you're driving at night time, especially between now and Easter time, you have to be very wary not to kill these guys. You know, more devils die every year on the side of the road between Christmas and Easter than they do from Del Social Chin Disease. That is our number one cure of Tasmanian troubles. And if we can get that message out to people to drive carefully, well then their numbers could increase. If we lose this animal, um, there's going to be a knock-on effect and it's not going to be pleasant. So I think, sorry, sorry. I think most of us at some stage have looked at our wanton children and said, you little devil, you. <laughs> yes, my head. <laughs> yeah. And we've loved them in saying it. You had a comment. So you had a meeting with this gentleman today. Did you not at three o'clock? I did, yeah. There was no resolution as to the, his... The painting stays up. Right, OK. <laughs> I agree with this gentleman that was here. I think that it would be a great idea if um, the plight of the devil was sanctioned by the religious groups that were objecting to it. And if we can change the, their opinions of it, I think that that would be an 
fantastic move for the for the Devils in Tasmania. Yeah, as I said, there's going to be a press release, but I can say his attitude was much more positive after I had spoken to him. But it's, it's part of Christianity to be uh, people who have dominion over these things, but who pastor them and look after them. And steward them. But, but mm. yeah, it's part of that. That it surely is a Christian's right and duty to look after God's which is probably why the Archbishop took to the streets and got people protesting yeah. about that. Um, and it'd be good to sort of see something like that happen. Uh, if we could, you know, if Christians could just add this, or even if, as, as I say, even if they use the devil as parables, it would be changing people's attitude towards it. And that's probably the biggest challenge when it's been given a name by a culture, and that name means Satan, Lucifer, or something evil and dark, if we can get people to change that opinion in their head, that is what's probably going to you know, win this over. As I say, you know, I was offended that people were offended, and I guess I was naive because, you know, talking to so many people about Tasmanian devils and getting good feedback, I was sort of of the opinion that most people like the devil. Yeah, I've never seen one. I've never seen one. recognised too. I mean, his children recognise it from their wee years when the Tasmanian devil was shooting around on cartoons. <laughs> A funny cartoon. At least it wasn't evil. <laughs> so. No, not at all. <laughs> no, I thought that would sort of, you know, go to buy unnoticed, really. <laughs> Normally people walk through a gallery and look at a painting for a couple of seconds and keep walking, even though know, you spent yeah. weeks at it. <laughs> so, well, it's good, though. I think the only other analogy uh, that there is between Tasmanian devils and Christians is that they're... That Real Christians are probably as close to extinction as Tasmanian devils. I was going to suggest that <laughs> if we're going to nurture, while we're nurturing the devils and goodness knows how many other uh, endangered species, but it's always been my opinion that a lot of creatures have a fight on life. They're not going to be here forever and ever and ever, I mean. Uh, the same as people are when you read a lot of the evolutionary type of... Mm -hmm. I'm not an, not an academic, I'm very grade one-ish. Because um, <laughs> I didn't get past grade seven. Um, it wasn't, you didn't have to in those days. Uh, I think it's just a sign of the times that... Uh, not a sign of the times, uh, uh, something that's going to happen. Mm. Could that be. The devils and lots of other species come and go. Same as fish and people and standing upright or getting round on all fours or doing. Things do come and go, but then again, sometimes people hasten that. Yeah. Well, they do. Yeah. And it's like global warming and a lot of the other things that people get upset about. I'll tell you one thing that would probably save the devil straight up, and that is if we cancel Christmas. Because <laughs> even I'm afraid to go on the roads at Christmas time. <laughs> dangerous. So, as I say, roads, the roads are the most dangerous. Thing, and we just happen to have a holiday period right smack bang in the middle of when young ones are leaving their mums. I don't think people are going to cancel Christmas somehow, but you know, man can do I mean, I think if they're Christians, they'd cancel Christmas. The street, the worst place on the planet, wouldn't it, Baroque Hill? Australia? It's pretty bad, yeah. It's, yeah. For our massacres, it's very bad. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Thanks a lot. Chat to me after if you like. But thank you, for everyone, for coming. And the painting stays up. Thank you.